I want to talk a little more about step 10 of my fire checklist, which is to pay off your mortgage. And a lot of my clients have asked me if they choose not to pay off their mortgages, does that mean they're not financially independent? No, you can be financially independent and retire early with a mortgage balance as long as you include the mortgage payment in your fire number. But your fire number is most likely going to be a lot higher, right? For example, if you want to retire by age 45, but you're going to have a mortgage payment until you're 60, and let's say your mortgage payment is $2,000 a month, then you're going to need to have at least $600,000 added to the fire number to account for that debt with a 4% withdrawal rate. However, there are some additional considerations you need to have before you retire early with the balance on your mortgage, like your net worth, retirement age, and interest rates. On the other hand, a lot of fire people would rather have their mortgages paid off before they retire early. Having a mortgage paid off is going to increase your cash flow and give you peace of mind while you're in retirement. Using that previous example with $2,000 a month, having that extra cash flow could allow you to travel more, save more for healthcare, invest more in the stock market, and many other opportunities. And many retirees have realized how much money they're going to end up spending on their healthcare in the US. So freeing up the mortgage payments could put them in a better financial situation in case of a major medical emergency or operation. This is a question of whether you want to be risk tolerant or risk averse during your retirement. If you're brand new to my channel, my name is Sai and welcome. So in this video, I'm going to go over how you should decide whether to pay down your mortgage before you reach fire or invest the difference and pay your mortgage off on time. I'll try to answer as many questions as I can in this video, but every one of you has a different financial situation than one another, including me. And you can always hire me as your financial coach by visiting firesidechat.com slash coaching and schedule a free 20 minute financial coaching session. The first consideration you should have is your overall net worth. And before you decide to pay down your mortgage, you need to make sure that you don't put too much money into real estate while not having enough cash saved or stocks invested. What you should prioritize is having enough cash set aside for an emergency fund and other sinking funds and investing for your retirement because the value of your home will increase no matter if you pay down your mortgage or not in the long term. And let me show you this chart here. The equity of your home is going to go up whether you pay down your mortgage faster or not. And when you, what you need to realize is that your home equity is an illi uh, illiquid asset, so you can't convert it to cash like you can with your investments. And historically speaking, and the average national home appreciation values average around 3.5% annually, but the average increase depends on the town, city, or state that you live in. Uh, the 3.5% average doesn't include the home appreciation values in 2020 and 2021, which were crazy years for the homeowners. And But let's say you bought a house now for $300,000 and it appreciates on average by 3.5% annually, then in 20 years, your home would be worth almost twice the amount you purchased at $600,000. In 30 years, it's almost triple the original price you purchased. And keep in mind that this chart is only accounting for the equity and not the loan that you're paying down over the years. And the only way to access the equity in your home is either by selling it or opening a home equity line of credit or HELOC or home equity loan, which is basically having a, a debt leveraged against your home. If you're ever going to use a HELOC, you better be able to pay it back or the lender can foreclose on your house. Be very careful using a HELOC because you're risking the roof over your head. Now, let's say your total net worth is $100,000, but $70,000 of that is in the home equity. Then you have too much tied up in real estate of your overall net worth. The average Americans um, have about 70% or more of their net worth in their primary residence. And that could be dangerous if we ever see another housing market crash like in 2008 and 2009. What my wife and I are trying to achieve is to keep our primary residence value no more than 30% of our net worth. We're currently around 40% right now. And thanks to the 2020-2021 housing market boom. That's why we're prioritizing our investments over paying down our mortgage to balance our net worth over time. And going back to my fire checklist, you should have a fully funded emergency fund prior to investing because that's the cash you need in case of an emergency. And I am completely fine with losing this portion of cash to inflation because this is a 
no kidding, I need the cash now scenario instead of selling stocks or other assets in my Roth IRA or borrowing from my 401k or TSP, right? Every year we update our emergency expenses and deposit more money to the emergency fund to adjust for inflation. I would argue that you prioritize steps five through seven of the fire checklist and then consider paying down the mortgage in step 10. There's also nothing wrong with paying down the mortgage now if you have the extra income or other passive income sources or you just simply want to be more risk averse. By the way, you can get these spreadsheets and other financial independence resources for free by visiting firesidechat.com slash contact. You can also check out the firesidechat shop if you're looking to start your own YouTube channel and I have all of my equipment at firesidechat.com slash shopping. Now let's talk about the risk versus reward for paying down the mortgage or investing the difference. The risk of the drawback or of paying down your mortgage early is having too much real estate tied up in your net worth, which I just talked about. The extra money you spend on paying down your mortgage faster is money you could have invested for your other financial goals like your early retirement, home renovation, or something else, right? Some people can argue that you lose on uh, lose out on tax breaks if you itemize your tax deductions, but most people don't itemize anymore because the standard tax deduction is so high. The benefit or reward of paying off your mortgage early is you save tens of thousands of dollars in interest payments. And this is a guaranteed return on your investment, right? Now, let me show you the comparison between paying down your mortgage faster and investing the difference. And let's say you set aside $500 a month to either pay down the mortgage or invest in the S&P 500 index fund. The first thing I always look at is the 10 year historical return of the S&P 500 index, which is the benchmark most investors use. The average S&P 500 return adjusted for inflation in the last 10 years is about 12%, not counting 2022. If the market continues to perform 12% average return for the next 10 years, then that $500 a month will become $117,000 by the end of year 10. Let's say you owe $400,000 on your primary residence and you decided to use that $500 a month to pay down your mortgage, your mortgage balance at the end of year 10 is $247,000. If your home equity increases by 3.5% on average annually, then your home would be worth about $564,000 with the home equity of $317,000. So not only you paid $153,000 in PNI, you also gained another $164,000 in equity over the course of 10 years. If you pay an extra $500 a month towards your $400,000 dollar uh, mortgage with a 5% interest rate, you're going to be able to pay off your mortgage in 240 months or exactly 20 years. Your home could be worth twice the amount you purchased 20 years ago with a 3.5% annual compound increase, right? If you invest that $500 extra per month into the S&P 500 index fund with a 12% annual rate of return, then by the end of year 20, your investment is $484,000. So theoretically, you could pay off your mortgage at year 16 because your investment at year 16 has accrued more than the mortgage balance. But, and this is a big but, the risk of investing the difference is the volatility in the stock market. I just gave you a hypothetical scenario of a 12% average annual return, which is only based on the 10 year historical returns. We all took some significant hits in the year 2022, and you need to make sure that your investment strategy includes the stock market volatility. And this is the good old risk tolerance versus risk averse, right? I can't tell you how the market will perform in the next 10, 15 or 20 years, it could be 12%, 10%, or even as low as 6%. But I can guarantee you that you'll have a return on your investments by saving interest payments on your mortgage. But no one can guarantee you that you'll have 12% average annual return for the next 10 or 20 years. You and you alone have to decide if you want to be more risk tolerant or risk averse. My wife and I had a conversation about the mortgage a long time ago, and that's at what age we're going to become more risk averse. And the answer we came up with is starting at age 50. Right now, we're including our mortgage payments in our fire number, and luckily it's not much. Our PNI payments are roughly $730 a month because we bought our home back in 2014. With the escrow payments, it's about $900 a month. Since we're going to retire early at 45 and have the mortgage paid off by 55, 
we added an additional $120,000 to our fire number. By age 45, we're going to have about $123,000 remaining on our mortgage balance. By age 55, we're going to have about $83,000 remaining. Our mortgage interest rate is at 2.9% for 30 years. So we decided not to pay down our mortgage because we have enough in our investments right now to pay the mortgage in full if we absolutely have to. And we want to take full advantage of our current age in our 30s and to be more risk tolerant. Even if we move to another house in the next three to five years, our plan remains the same. We want to be mortgage debt free in our 50s, preferably by age 55. The other factor is that my daughter is going to be an adult uh, living on her own by then. So we would most likely downsize our house in the future. Our target net worth in our primary residence remains the same. If we bought a million dollar house one day and we made a 20% down payment, then that's $200,000 in home equity, right? To maintain that 30% net worth and equity of the primary residence, then we need to have a minimum of $666,000 in net worth. When our net worth is beyond a million, two million, or five million dollars, there is nothing wrong with buying a house with straight up cash if we decide to be more risk averse. Investing the difference in the stock market probably won't make sense to us when we're in our 50s. When we're in our 30s or 40s, we want to maximize our opportunity by using that extra money we have to meet our other financial goals like achieving our early retirement. Our current trajectory shows that we should have at least $3.5 million invested by the time we turn 45. We plan to buy several rental properties in the future to diversify our income beyond the stock market and businesses. At the same time, we want to ease our minds by having our primary residence paid off in our 50s so we can retire without any debt. And if you want to know more about how to invest for your early retirement, be sure to check out these two videos. So with that said, I appreciate you watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one.